My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiologist in New York City. I had considered going into a subspecialty of anesthesiology called regional anesthesia and acute pain medicine, which involves, among other things, administering nerve blocks to patients. And in this video, I will be showing an actual nerve block on a patient and talking with the assistant program director for the regional anesthesia fellowship at Mount Sinai Hospital. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. We are going to do a safety check, okay? So make sure that we're, uh, we have the patient that we want and uh, we're doing the correct procedure. So that looks pretty good. Yep. So that's the sartorius muscle right there. And then right underneath that is the femoral artery. Uh, and the saphenous nerve, which is the nerve that we really minted black as part of the adductor canal, uh, lies somewhere inside this adductor canal. Um, so our job is to inject local anesthetic into that space uh, and block the saphenous nerve. And technically the nerve to the bass is medialis. Big pinch. And you're gonna see the needle come up on the left side of the screen there. And right now it's traversing through the sartorius muscle. And our goal is to go right under it. And he's gonna get really close to the artery. So he's gonna aspirate to make sure it's not within a vessel. And then he's gonna start injecting slowly. And you can see the artery getting pushed away from the pressure of the injection of the liquid that's getting introduced into that space. And we keep on Aspirating just to make sure we didn't move into the vessel. I think we are all finished. Excellent. And you can see the needle coming out on the screen. And that's it. All done. Okay. The voice that you're hearing is that of the assistant program director for the Regional Anesthesia and Acute Pain Management Fellowship at Mount Sinai Hospital, Dr. Chang Park. Thank you very much for your time. I just wanted to start by getting an overview of what exactly is regional anesthesia. Regional anesthesia is a subset of techniques within anesthesia where we inject numbing medication around nerves to numb up a very specific part of the body. So let's say just the arm or a leg or even just the belly region. And the idea behind it is that you don't necessarily have to anesthetize the entire person and have them unconscious for the entire procedure if we don't have to. So if they're just getting a surgery for the arm, then all we have to do is anesthetize the arm, as opposed to having the patient undergo general anesthesia, which is not uh, necessary for that surgery. The other benefit is that we can also reduce the amount of pain medication that is used both during the surgery and after the surgery. Given the current climate with the opioid crisis, I think we can all agree that using less opioid would be better. This technique really helps really make that possible. So we have a couple of different options, including what you trained me on when I was a resident, which is doing a what would be called a single shot block, and that entails administering medication once and then not having anything left in place. For this patient, we placed a nerve catheter, which is essentially just a piece of plastic tubing that allows us to administer medication whenever medication needs to be administered. So what's the benefit of having a catheter in place? The catheter is a great technique. It essentially allows the block to last for as long as the catheter is in place. If you do a single shot, which is the alternative, which means that you just inject numbing medication into you know, an area of the body, whether you know, it's the, uh, the arm or the leg, uh, it makes it numb for however long uh, the numbing medication that you use lasts. You have a general idea of how long that might be based on what you use, but other than that, when it runs out, it runs out. The catheter, on the other hand, you can deliver medication continuously using that catheter. There's usually an external delivery device that we use and the numbing medication just gets infused just at a slow rate, very continuously. We usually send them home with a numbing medication device that lasts about three days, give or take. But really, you know, if we were to, we could potentially be able to use it for even longer or even shorter, depending on, you know, if the, uh, the patient likes it or not. Uh, so it's a great way to just, uh, just draw out however long the effectiveness of that numbing medication injection that you did uh, could, could last. Using a catheter is a pretty advanced technique. 
what other techniques do fellows learn when they come do an extra year of training and become uh, board certified in regional anesthesia? We do various uh, single shot injections uh, covering different nerve areas. So we do a lot of brachial plexus blocks that uh, block various parts of the arm. Lower body technique, uh, so covering the knees, the lower part of the leg. They also learn a lot of what we call truncal blocks, which is uh, numbing medication injection into the abdominal wall layers where a lot of the nerves lie. And there's various different ones depending on what uh, specific area that you're targeting. And those are some of the major ones that they cover. And in addition, for a lot of those, they learn um, not just the single shot aspect of it, but the, the catheter-based technique as well. And what types of surgeries do you typically provide blocks for? So you can use them for uh, arm surgery, hand surgery, shoulder surgery. You can use it for uh, ACL repairs. You can use it for knee replacements. You can even use them for uh, hip replacements. Uh, if you want to get into you know, spinals and epidurals, we can do it for that as well. For ankle surgery, so those, are, those cover your you know, extremities. Uh, and then for truncal-based anesthesia, anytime there's any potential for an abdominal surgery where they uh, plan to have uh, opioids as a part of their analgesic regimen, this can help decrease the amount of the opioid use uh, potentially, and uh, that's all covering a lot of surgeries. So why would a resident think about doing a fellowship in regional anesthesia? So first of all, a anesthesia resident, uh, during the course of their residency training, will perform a lot of regional anesthesia and they'll become quite good at it. If you want to become, you know, the expert in the field, uh, if you want to become the person that, you know, really has taken the time to, you know, understand the anatomy, uh, the techniques uh, so that you can really apply it to all the other new blocks that are constantly being developed um, so that you're ahead of the curve, uh, so that you are the people designing the blocks. Um, so I think that's, um, that, that's the kind of crowd uh, who would benefit from a regional anesthesia fellowship. The other people who I think would benefit from it are the people who want to actually teach it. So it's one thing to actually perform the block, uh, but it's a really completely different skill set um, I've found to be able to teach the block effectively as well. And if somebody wants to do the Regional Anesthesia Fellowship at Mount Sinai Hospital, how many spots are available? There are two spots available. And so we'll go ahead and just put more information in the description for this video if you'd like to learn anything more about it. Thank you so much for your time and for letting me film blocks that are going on. It's really nice to talk to you, Dr. Park. Pleasure. Thanks for having me.